All right, good evening, everyone. A good morning. Good morning. This is Sunday School for March 10th, 2020. We're certainly grateful for the, another day that the Lord has kept us. We're going to go into a word of prayer. Thank you. We invite um, Sister Dr. Scott off with our uh, overview, and then we'll have each teacher give a synopsis of the word as we come. The lesson is coming from Zechariah, the eighth chapter, verse 18 to 23. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for this time of study. Thank you for your word. We pray now, God, as we study your word, that your voice is heard clearly. Give us direction. Give us understanding. Give us clarity. Yes, Lord. Teacher, bless every student. Oh, yes, Lord. In, all in Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right, please, you can start now with the uh, overview. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Mo Olive Sunday School. Glad you all tuned in to hear a word from the Lord on this morning. Thank you again for joining us. We want to continue our lessons on what is to come. Today's lesson is coming out of Zechariah, the eighth chapter. We're going to start at the... Um, what verse is that? Number one, the title of the lesson is A New Day is Coming. We want to still talk about what the Jews were experiencing when they came out of captivity. They were coming out about 50,000 and going back to Jerusalem to build the walls and to build the temple. They ran into some difficulties and stopped building on the temple. And then they had some um, questions about fasting and Zechariah handled the question on fasting, but he abruptly switched gears and started talking about what was to come because they was experiencing some, some opposition, some, um, some oppression, um, some injustice. We talked about those things on last week. And so um, Zachariah had a word from the Lord to give to them. And we want to talk about what that word was this morning. Number one says, again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, I, I just want to stick a pen in that um, the Lord of hosts, because that's a wake up call, because that uh, Lord of hosts means um, that God is all powerful and whatever he's getting ready to say, he is going to bring it to pass by his power. Number two says, thus said the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy and I was jealous for her with great fury. To sum that up, that meant that God loved the Jews so much that he is angry at her enemies. That's what that means right there. So we see right here that God's love did not diminish because they went into captivity. And he wanted them to know that. So we need to get that out, that God's love don't diminish because he chastises you. Number three says, thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Now that they're back in the city of Jerusalem, God wanted them to know that he is going to be in the midst of them. And there is going to be a transformation happening in Jerusalem. He's going to change the name. And he called the name the City of Truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. So we got two things. God's love did not diminish. Number two, there's going to be a, a transformation going on. Um, because of God's presence is in the city of Jerusalem. Amen? Thus saith the Lord, number four, thus saith the Lord of hosts, there shall yet old men and old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man 
with his staff in his hand for every age. Because the Lord God is in the midst of them, um, he says here that Jerusalem would be a place of safety because his presence is there. Old men and old women couldn't walk the streets because of opposition. Young kids couldn't play in the streets because it was just too dangerous. Vernon McGee um, put it this way, there would be no cars in heaven so the kids could play in the streets. <laughs> Anyway, number five says, and the streets of Jerusalem shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. So we said it was going to be a, Jerusalem was going to be a safe place. So we have Jerusalem, um, a transformation will take place in um, Jerusalem, and Jerusalem will be a place of safety. Number six says, thus said the Lord of hosts, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in my eyes, said the Lord of hosts? What I'm telling you right now seems so great that it seems like it's almost impossible. Now, if you put yourself in the position that they were in, they, the city walls were torn down, there was no temple. Well, they had started to build the temple, but it was incomplete. They had some opposition going on from the outside neighbors. And so they were, they felt that what was to come was really impossible. But God says, is it, is, is it too impossible for me? Jesus says, all things are possible if you believe. Um, number seven, thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. So let's make sure we got what's going on, um, going into the millennium period. God saying that I will be in the midst of you. So, and Jerusalem, number two, will have a transformation because I am in the midst. I am going to change Jerusalem's name to the city of truth, to the mountain of the Lord, to the holy mountain. Number three, he said Jerusalem will be a place of safety. Old men, old women will be able to walk the streets, children, boys and girls will be able to play in the streets. Now we have something else going on. He said, I am going to bring my people back from wherever they are located. So there's going to be a regathering in the city of Jerusalem. God is getting ready to do some marvelous things um, for the people that he loves. Number 11 says, but now I will not be unto the residue, the residue people as in the formal days, says the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give, forgive me, shall give her increase, and thy heaven shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathens, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. I have to read all of that to get it out. God is going to not just regather the Jews, but he says that when you all come back, Jerusalem will be a prosperous place. The fruit trees is going to grow. The crops is going to grow. There's going to be water in its season. You're going to have abundance. I am not going to do to Jerusalem, to the people of Jerusalem, like I did in the olden times. He said, I'm getting ready to change all that around, and you're going to be prosperous. So one, he says that I'm going to be in the midst of you. Two, 
he said that you're going Jerusalem is going to be a place of transformation. I am going to change Jerusalem's name to the city of truth, to the mountain of the Lord, to the holy mountain. Number three, he says, I am going to make Jerusalem a safe place to live. Old men, old women, young boys, young girls will be able to walk around, play in the streets and be safe. Amen. I am going to gather, number four, I am going to gather my people for wherever they are and gather them into Jerusalem so that they can enjoy my presence. He said, now, not only am I going to do this, because I know it sounds like it's a great thing and it's never going to happen. He said, but there's nothing too hard for me to do. He said, I'm going to also make Jerusalem a place of prosperity. Whatever you plant is going to grow because you're going to have the rain, the, the, the rain is going to come to bring it. It's going to be over an abundance of all this thing. We're talking about what's going to happen in the millennium period. Amen. And finally, he says, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, he says, as I thought you, as I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, saith the Lord of hosts. And I repented not. When your forefathers had sinned against me and would not repent, he says, I sent them into captivity so that they can pay for what they did. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah, fear you not. Because you came out of captivity and you have repented of your sins, I am going to bless you. Amen. He said, these things, these are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let not, and let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath for all these things that I hate, saith the Lord. He said, I'm going to do all these things for you, but you have a responsibility as well. He says, the responsibility comes in. He said, I want you to speak the truth to your neighbors. He says that and execute judgment of truth. Tell the truth. That's what I like. And, um, and show peace at your gate. He said, don't be doing, imagining evil in your hearts, doing evil against your neighbors. You know how sometimes we just think about the things that we want to do to hurt somebody, to cause evil on somebody. He said, don't even think of those things. And he says here, and I love no false oath. Stop lying. Tell the truth. He said, for these things I hate, saith the Lord. God loves justice. God is concerned about how we treat one another. Amen. So we have a responsibility. Now God is going to carry out his responsibility and now we're going to we're going to have to carry out our responsibility and we just laid out those responsibilities uh just a second ago. So this is going to happen in the millennium period. So he's telling Zechariah to tell the people this so they can be encouraged. Amen. So no matter what the opposition, no matter what the injustice, no matter what the evil is going on in our present time, in our present situation, he's Zechariah is still speaking to us today, letting us know what's going to happen to us because we have been adopted into the family. Amen. So God is going to be in the midst of us and things are going to be um, happen because we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that's the lesson, and we're going to hear from everybody else. I don't want to take up all the time. So, Reverend Mobley, back to you. Amen. Amen. Great job, Sister Teresa, for the overview. This time I'm going to call on Mother Jefferson, and then she comes and she shares, and then um, she's going to uh, bring out some key thoughts also from the lesson. Mother Jefferson. Okay, Pastor, for the, uh, for the young people, it was... Um, the same title, A New Day is Coming. And uh, in this uh, lesson, God told Zechariah about his great love for Jerusalem, his people, the Jews. And uh, he talked about returning 
to live there with them. That's in, in the future. The people had uh, previously made God angry and he had punished them and they had gone into captivity. That was the, the older generation. And uh, he showed them no mercy and put them in captivity. Now God said the old people would uh, once again come out and be able to walk and sit along the streets in safety. And, uh, and the children would be able to fill the streets and play because uh, when things happen, it seems like it's the older people or the children that get hurt, that get uh, that's more vulnerable. So mm -hmm. God, God is going to fix it for them. The older people with their canes and stuff, they'll be able to walk in the streets and the children can play in safety. And uh, the Jews, they may not have thought this uh, was this. They may have thought this was too good to be true, but we know there's um, there's nothing too hard for God. He'll do what He wants to do. So He had promised, uh, told Zachariah to tell them this. God promised not to treat these people like He did in the days of old, when He had to punish the uh, the, the previous people. Now He would He would uh, be with them. He would bless them. He would send the rain, and their crops would prosper and they would prosper, and but they had to um, be fair. They had to be truthful. They had to do their part of, of everything. So these were his people, and he was their God. His presence was, would always be there with them. And uh, God, he, he wanted them to know there's nothing too hard for him. So my note to the young people was, uh, there is nothing too hard for God to do. When things seem hard for you, remember who you are and who you are. Remember your upbringing. Remember God. Amen. Amen. Great job, Mother Jeff said. It was great. Um, some principles to hold on to. So young people, please hold on to those principles um, and do those things and watch your life be prosperous in the hands of God. Uh, at this time, we'll call on uh, Minister Glover. I uh, want to particularly look at the first couple of verses there. Just give a overview of those first um, three verses in, uh, of our lesson. Mr. Glover? You want me to read them all first, Pastor? Read the verses? Just give Just a thought on those three verses, yes. Okay, and um, first one, is see, that God introduces himself. He, he dis, he dis, he's declaring his power and his authority. He gives Zechariah another word to give to his people. God is a jealous God, but it's a, it's a it's a true, it's a true kind of jealousy. Yeah. Kind of jealousy that shapes or forms the relationship between him and Judah. God wants and should be the only one that Judah worship. God tells us in Exodus 20 to not worship other gods and that he is a jealous God. When we look at the second verse in um, the New Living Translation, and it talks about his love and his love being passionate is strong for him. That's the type of jealousy it was, a, a jealousy that loved and was in protect. He, um, in um, Ezekiel had already revealed that God would, had left the temple and left Jerusalem. But now he's saying he's coming back and he's going to dwell in the midst of the people. Lord continued with the Ju Judah. They, he was always with them. Their future was secure with them. Jerusalem would now be called the city of truth. This would bring about change. The name would, the change of name would bring about character. His rest, um, his, their reputation would be restored. The mountain of the Lord will again be known as the holy mountain. The Lord and Judah would be faithful to their covenant to each other. God would punish their enemies. Now, this would give them the confidence in God's love and protection for their life and their, their guidance for his guidance for their life. Amen. 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 Your thoughts there. Uh, Ms. Uh, Mormon, I'm um, we'll calling you next here. Um, yes. Right on, on, on the scripture as well that you gained from a few verses that you. Um, looked at. Oh, praise the Lord. Um, verse 7, it says, um, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people. And we know right now here 
We got the I will. We got the I will in eight and nine. He's saying who he is. I will. Nobody else can do these things but our Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he's the only one who can do this, he said. And he said here, um, he said, I'm going to save my people from the East country and from the West country. And he said, you know what he's saying here? He's going to call them all home from the East, from the West, the South, the North. That's what he said he was going to do. And that's what he's going to do uh, in the future, as you say. In the millennium time, they're coming back. We know, the, uh, we know over there in 1948, it was called the rebirth of, uh, of Jerusalem. They when they came home. But later on, they coming from all over the world. They coming back, and only one someone can do this, bring them home. If I is Jehovah. Um, what else? Twelve, and it says over here in twelve, it said be. But now I was not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, said the Lord of hosts. You know, in the former days, um, the ancient Israel they messed up. They sinned. And like I said, I'm gonna believe right then and the Lord didn't have the compassion on what he's gonna do. He just he punished them, he did. For what they was doing, they was um they was in sin. They was in sin and they ain't had no mind to come to turn from their wicked ways. But the Lord said, I'm not gonna do this to them. But uh, he said, the Lord of hosts. Well, the new gener I'll say the new um millennium time, he's not gonna do none of these things. And we're going to have a, a free course, we are. Mm -hmm. And it says here what he's going to do. He said the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their drew, and I will cause the raiment of the people to possess all of these things. Now, all I can say in here, the Lord's going to call us to be prosperous. He's the one going to give us the vine. He's the one, the rain. Uh, because of these, the rain, the sun, and all of these great things, if without him, we cannot have none of these great things of being prosperity. We don't receive it on our own. The Lord, the Lord God, he of Israel, he's the one going to do it. Amen. The almighty God, he's the only one who can do the thing because he said he's um, the present, he's all everywhere, he's um, the potent, he's a mighty God. I, I just say all of this is going to happen in the new... And in, in the millennium time. So therefore, therefore, we're just going to be patient and pray and do what he calls us to do. Amen. Amen. Great insight, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mormon. Um, uh, as we get ready to wrap up, because we've got a few minutes here left, um, that guy is a minor prophet who, who is giving a word from the Lord uh, over and over through this eighth chapter. Eighth chapter, you see, mm -hmm. the prophet said, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord over and over. Uh, indicating that God is speaking concerning the people. We know that Israel had gone into captivity, and uh, because of their sin, because of what they had done, and God saw where they are and God's love for them, and He was more Amen. It, their enemies on, that they were doing unto the people of God. That God begins to speak about the restoration that He had in store for His people. One word of encouragement that we all must have when we mess up, <clears throat> um, and God causes us to. To feel um, the chastisement of his, uh, of his wrath because God loves us. He tries to get us back into correction. And here, what God is doing now is He's doing a turnaround through this, this prophecy of what God is getting ready to do the restoration and the plan that God has in store for the people of God that He has a place that's prepared for them to prepare. For them. This is a great lesson all the way through because it really speaks to what we're going through now. Um, in the time that we're living, we see so much going on. Even right now, um, this coronavirus is hitting, it's more effective on our seniors than any other uh, population. Uh, elders have to stay in the house and they can't come out because of the of this, this, this virus is going on. Our children are now, there's a new um, disease out and they're warning about our young people and all this. But God has an ultimate plan and his ultimate plan is that he's going to keep us. And no matter what we face in this life, God still loves us. And he never leaves us. And here in this lesson, we see God's hand still on his love, on the people that he loved. And one thing that we must be encouraged about is God still has his hand on us. Um, one final thought from Teresa. We have about three minutes left, and then we're going to close out with prayer. Knowing what's coming because God has promised a new day. The title, the golden text, is talking about that 
we should not fear no matter what it looks like no matter how it sounds we have to trust god enough to know that he is going to lead us to that better day. He told Zechariah to tell the people, because I have promised you these things, do not fear. Mm -hmm. We can't operate on fear. Fear is the absence of peace. Fear is the absence of security. If God is in the midst of us, if God is in us, if God is leading us, why are we fearing? Stand on the encouragement, that God has left on record through Zechariah. Do not fear. Trust in God. Amen. 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 Great word to end on. Amen. Remain faithful. Stay trusting God and hold to his unchanging hand. God has not left us. He has not brought us this far to leave us now. And if we are hold on this hand, he has a place prepared for us. He said, I go away to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be there also. God has a place for prepared people, and we're just getting ready to get to get to the place that He has for us at New Jerusalem. Amen. Let us close out with a word of prayer. Amen. Once again, we thank you for our Sunday school lesson. Our Sunday school lesson is brought to you each Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Amen. On our YouTube or our web church website, please go in, be a part of Sunday school, invite others to get go in and uh, watch our Sunday school lesson as we uh, share the word of God with you. Father, we thank you now for this time of studying. We thank you now for this time of teaching. We pray for each teacher now, God, that you continue to edify us, continue to strengthen us, continue to give us wisdom. We pray now for every student, every listener, God, we pray that you bless our homes and our lives, that we become more like you, God. We thank you now, God, that you have not left us, nor have you forsaken us. We don't fear, God, but we stand firm on your word. We love you, God, because you first loved us. Now may the grace of God, the sweet teaching of the Holy Spirit, May you rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. And all who love God said, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.